Hey guys, welcome back. This is Sheila. I'm not going to say Sheila's One Stop Coaching Channel because if you've noticed, I've changed the name of the channel today. It is going to be Riders Inc. This is Sheila Texter and the name of my channel is Riders Inc. We are going to be learning about riding, which basically every Wednesday and Friday I have been putting out videos for almost a year. Pretty much I started when the pandemic when the pandemic hit in 2020 in March. I kind of started during that time. I had had the channel for probably a year, two years, but I hadn't done anything with it. So I went in there and I kind of uh, put a name in it and I started putting out videos every Wednesday and Friday. And my content is on my writing journey but on Fridays, I always tried to bring like a motivational, inspirational coaching tip as well. And I am still a certified life coach. I took a course online, you know, and got the certificate, things like that. But I'm not getting paid for it or nothing like that. But I am trying my best to influence people, to make an impact, to put my hands, so to speak, into people's lives. I may not be able to do it physically, but if I can do it through your eyes, through YouTube, through my Facebook page, through other things, my Instagram, I want to help somebody. I really do. But I have changed the name of my channel to Writers Inc. And I've also changed the picture because really this channel is going to be about my journey as an author. I have already written two books. They are both on Amazon, Life After the Mistake. And how to be prosperous. This in here is on Amazon and it's in ebook form as well $14.99 for paperback, $9.99 for ebook. Also, um, if nothing happens this, this summer, I am going to revise this book and I will talk about that later why I want to revise it. But to make a um, long story short, I want to own my own ISBN, which is an international standard book number that is on the back right here that you will get for free if you accept it. And that's what I did to start with because that's where I was at. If you've watched my channel any at all or my Facebook thing, any of that, you will see that I always say, start where you are. Start where you are. And that's what I did. I took their free ISBN for the paperback. I took their free, I, their free ISBN for my Kindle Direct. The only thing with that is you cannot take your books. You cannot take that book and put it anywhere else if you don't own your own ISBN. But we will not address that today. My goal is to still finish reading this book. And I'm going to finish reading this one on Fridays. But I did change the name of my channel. I did change my picture because I don't seem to be drawing the clientele that I want to draw. I don't seem to be drawing the subscribers that I'm wanting to draw because I know that I have a great, a lot of information and good information and good tips that will help riders on their journey, especially newbies, especially people that are just starting out. Now, I'm still learning. I am still learning. But I tell you, for a newbie, all this stuff is going to be um, priceless, though, you know, when you first start writing your first book. Uh, I've got goals still that I want to eventually, this summer, I am planning on hopefully checking in on getting this book in Audible. Once that I get it revised, and once I get my new ISBN for these, I am planning on doing an Audible, putting it on a platform to where it can be downloaded in an audible form that people can just listen to it. I'm not, for, I want to do it myself, but I'm not for sure how that's going to work out. I would like to read my own book and do that myself, but I'm, I may not. I may have to go in and hire a narrator, but I'm, I'm praying about that. That's, that's just who I am. I pray about my decisions. I ask God to guide me. Like I have been praying literally about this since the first of the year. Since I put, since it's been in my spirit and my heart to get this changed out 
probably between June and July, hopefully, maybe by the end of August, this will be revised and it will be on mine and I can put it on other platforms, hopefully sell it from my own website. You know, there's just so many things that I still got to learn and a lot of my learning has got to be in the com in the networking, in, in the computer things and the internet and website designs and making a online store, you know, for my other things that are coming. This book here is going is the first of 12 devotionals. My plan is to have 12 of these over the next couple of years. And, and I am working on the second one right now, how to be intentional um, with your words. I'm uh, working on that. I probably got about seven more, um, seven more verses to add, you know, seven more days because they're like 31 day devotionals. They're journaling, they're prayer, they're Bible insights for all ages. But my plan is to have 12 of these. So I've got some goals. I got some goals to have these done over the next couple of years. I want to learn how to work my way around in the website design and the websites. I have a website. It was BeBibleSmart.com and then it's Sheila's One Stop. But I, right now I have it in um, under construction mode because it's so messed up. I mean, it's just so messed up. It, I mean, it's okay, but it ain't nothing what I really want. It's not what I want. And so I'm, I've been taking college classes. I'm trying to learn, but I cannot seem to tap into the right classes just yet, you know, because, you know, the college makes you take certain ones before you get to certain ones. So I'm kind of been having to take some classes that ain't got nothing to do with what I want to do to get there. But, you know, if you if you went to college, if you got a career, you know what I mean when I say they make you take uh, the basic stuff first, you know, in accounting and things that you won't, you probably won't never use. But it's, it's just, to me, it's just part of the uh, money. It's part of their um, policy to get their money, you know, because if you jump straight to what you needed, they probably wouldn't make as much in the colleges as they do. Especially if you get Pell Grants or grants or anything like that. But I'm still going to finish reading this book. That's my goal, is to finish reading this. I will read this chapter 7 today. I think there's like 10 chapters. I think 10. 11 chapters. 11 chapters in the New Beginning part, and I'm on chapter 7. So we don't like too much longer, and we will be through with this book. And like I say, I'm still going to be doing this one. But... I would like to address the picture change. I kind of, my goal is still to help people through the Bible. Through bringing Bible principles into your life, you can create things like this. You can, um, let's see, how, what's the word I'm looking for? Create, uh, you can manifest, that's it. You can manifest books. You can manifest your own business through God's Word and through looking to Him, putting Him first, seeking His guidance, asking Him to put His hand in everything that you do. But when you do that, He will come. If you ask Him and you're sincere and you're doing your part, He will come and He will show you the steps that you need to take. But I'm going to read out of here today. But before we go into the reading, I don't know if I've shared this yet or not, but every year I try to pray. Well, I have for now, about three years now. I've prayed, started praying like in December, November, December, for a word for the next year. A phrase, a word, something that will continuously connect with me that whole year. And I started this back in 2017. So the Lord gave me the thought, the, the words, new beginning. New beginnings. For 2018 and little did I know that we would start a church we knew that God was taking us somewhere we knew we were going to be doing something it had been like a three-year process it's all in the book but I didn't know that it was fixing to be then and within like in February 
the beginning of the year to February of, of 2018, the Lord opened the door. We came to Blava, Arkansas, and we are still here. We're loving it. We're, we're pastoring a little work here, a little missions church, you want to call it, you know, from we planted a work, and we're trying to grow it basically from the ground up. When me and my husband came, it wasn't nobody but us. The second Sunday, we had about 11. Well, most of them was our kids, but that's okay. Because, you know, that's just part of ministry. Thankful, you know, thank God the kids followed. But, uh, and before the pandemic hit, we had kind of built up our little congregation to about 25 to 30. And, you know, we were getting excited, and we're still excited, you know. But the pandemic came in and kind of threw us off. It scared everybody, and we uh, we lost some people. And now that we're all coming back, we're we're doing good to to get them there. All of if everybody would come at the same time, we would still probably have about twenty. But they all randomly come at different times because it's just been so. There's been so much uncertainty. Some of it's been because. Some families have had the uh, the virus. Sometimes they've been around the people that's had the virus. There's just been different things going on that has kept all of us from being there at the same time. So I'm looking forward to everybody being back at the same time real soon. But anyway, so then 2019, it was flourish. The word was flourish. 2020 was the year of completion. Now, I had no idea, you know, what was going to go down in 2020 when I first started. No, I don't think nobody knew we was going to fix and run into a pandemic. But the word that God gave me for 2020, when he gave it to me like the end of December there, the beginning of January, was the year of completion. Well, during that year of completion, I finished a coaching course. I finished my first book and got it published on Amazon. I also finished my first devotional. It was like December the 7th or 11th or something like that, but it barely made it in there, but it was completed. And I also am in a, I'm in a Toastmasters club. A Toastmasters club is basically, it's a club where people learn to speak, speech, communicate, leadership. It's all kind of everyday learnings, but now you pay a fee. And, but you go through different levels, you go through pathways is what they call them, and you can you choose different things. And I came through like a speaking, I think it was mastery, uh, presentation mastery was my first pathway. I got through it and got my certificate for that. I am still in the club. I've kind of took a break from the meetings right now. My plan is to go back in May, Lord's willing. After my college class is over, after virtual schooling is over, the school is closed for the summer because I am helping my grandson do virtual schooling. So that takes up a lot of my day. And my plan is to kind of take off for the summer as for schooling. And so I'm planning on kind of uh, going back and meeting on the virtual Zooms because we have Zoom meetings in the Toastmasters. Uh, I'm not for sure if I'm going to do every Tuesday night because that's when we meet. I'm thinking I might do every other Tuesday night. But during that break away from college and away from schooling, I'm planning on getting this revised, planning on kind of uh, honing in on getting a couple more of these done. So I've got goals and I've got some plans. I've got a plan for sure. But anyway, I've done been on here 13, 14 minutes, but... Share my channel, subscribe to it, guys, because it's just going to get better and better. It won't be long I'll be holding up three or four of these, you know. And like I say, uh, I almost forgot, if you notice, my picture has changed to So You Want to Be a Writer because I'm focusing more on helping people on their writing journey from, from the very beginning to all the things that I learned. But that little picture is actually the front of my next writing project that hopefully will be ready to to purchase March the 31st. That's the date that we have and hopefully it will uh, be done. But it's a, it is going to be an ebook writing tip book. The name of it is so uh, no, the name of it is how to be a writer. And then there's a little subtitle about buzzing into the writing journey. 
And but then that little picture says, so you want to be a writer? And what is so great about that little picture and that little title is I actually used the, a speech. I did a speech in Toastmasters uh, because I had to do like a professional 20 minute to a 20, 25 minute speech. I had to do a professional speech in my Toastmasters club. And I chose to talk about my writing journey and I used the title, so you want to be a writer? And I went in there and I gave about seven or eight tips that I learned along my way. And it just come to me one morning, which is the steps that are being ordered by the Lord, to turn that speech into a little short read book that's going to be only available in ebook form as of right now. I might eventually make it a little paper paperback book. I don't know yet. I'm not going to say I'm not, but as of right now, that is my plan for it just to be an ebook, and more than likely, it will just be like four ninety nine, because I don't think it's going to be but like thirty something pages. But it's it is going to be so full and it's so loaded with good 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 tips about writing your first book and your journey. I don't claim to be an expert in it by no means, because I'm still now I'm getting into the technical part. That's just a good platform to start with on writing your book. I'm in now learning how to market my book, learning about the audible part, you know, learning about the ISBNs, everything like that, and, and the computer stuff. That's where I am fixing to be at trying to advance in those things. Even right now, I have a lady that goes into my Kindle Direct Publishing platform my account, she has my information because she's my proofreader and editor, and she does the layout. She does the format and lays it out and does everything for me right now, but I want to this summer to possibly kind of go in there and maybe start learning to do some of that stuff on my own because the more I learn, the less I have to pay. But if it's just too much, some sometimes... Some things just ain't your, they're not your cup of tea. There's just some things that is not your flow. And if it's not your flow, sometimes you just got to step away from it and say, hey, I can't do it. And you hire someone to do it. You know, if you could learn to do it, it would save you money. But if it's taking you two months to do something that someone could do in one day and you pay them $100, then hey, it's going to be worth it, guys. It's going to be worth it. And anyway, I want to get on here and get this little book, uh, get this book read. So we're going to read, I've been reading Life After the Mistake, New Beginnings. It's a book that I, my first book that I wrote. And in the here in the front, we always have a scripture. The scripture today is Job 8 and 7. I love this scripture. Though thy beginnings were small, Yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Now this is King James Version. I always use King James Version. But, you know, your latter end, though your beginnings are small, your latter end will be great. But you've got to invest on the small end when you're first starting out. You've got to just start. Chapter 7. I don't know if y'all will. Y'all probably may hear it some while I'm on here. You may hear the rain now, but here in Blyville, Arkansas, this is March the 17th. It's St. Patrick's Day, 2021. It is storming here, major. Some severe thunderstorms are moving through, and so they got a lot of weather alerts out. Right now, we're pretty good, but you may hear some thunder in the background. Okay, Chapter 7, Seasons. We knew that our gifts were being tested. Every person has a gift and a calling. Sometimes it takes pressure to reveal those precious gems. What was this season we were in? Some seasons are harder than others. I knew the Lord was telling me to dig deeper. It was definitely a time of refining, and I turned to the Bible as my main source of strength during this time. I was, I was able to encourage a few friends as well. 
This is one of the gifts that God graced me with. One friend contacted me from another state asking for my help. The next year and a half would be a great challenge. She was a backslider wanting to come back to God. She was very sick and needed to change the way she was living. Her first goal was to quit smoking. We began to pray for different situations. God knew she needed me and I needed her. We went into a spirit we went into spiritual war for her. Many days were spent sending her scriptures, our messaging out was our new best friend. She wanted to get her own place since she was staying with her daughter. God answered that in each request in the process of time. Really, a book could be written about our journey together. Sometimes we are looking for platforms to step out on and great doors to open when God is simply seeing where your heart is. One night, I was half asleep in my recliner and for, some region, and for some reason, I reached out my hand like I was catching a ball. The name Nona Freeman fell into my hand. This was around September 2017. I had read about Nona in a few, in a few other books. After a few days, I decided to look her up on YouTube. Several clips of her preaching appeared on my screen. The first one was a message called, Not my will, but thy will be done. Without a doubt, God was giving me a word straight from heaven. I read that Mrs. Freeman had often heard from God at 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. She also wrote several books and was an evangelist, a missionary to Africa for many years. I could feel a shifting in my spirit. It felt like a mantle had been dropped on me, which made sense since she was deceased. There is a story in the Bible of a man, man of God named Elijah. In First and Second Kings, Elijah passed by Elisha and cast his mantle upon him. So he departed thence and he found Elisha, in the, in the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelve, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. That's 1 Kings 19 and 19. This was a sign that Elisha was going to be Elijah's successor. From that moment on, Elisha followed close to Elijah. Elijah would often tell him to stay behind as he went on his journey. But Elisha would not leave Elijah's side. Elijah asked Elisha what he wanted to gain from following him. Elisha responded to the man of God, I want a double portion of thy spirit. Finding out about Nona Freeman helped me to recognize, y'all, it is really storming here. Let me find where I'm at. Finding out about Nona Freeman helped me to recognize that God had a greater purpose for me. I felt like it was a pull to seek Him in a deeper manner. I have learned in my walk with God that He often speaks in early hours and just before dawn. I would encourage you to pay attention to those early wake-up times. In fact, Next time you're awakened at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., ask God if he wants to share something with you. God ministered to me so often in those early morning hours. I would love for those reading this book to find those same encouraging moments. It will take you on a whole new level. I will pray after this book that after this book, your life will forever be changed. The time that God has given you here on this earth will that time, the time that God has given you here on this earth will move forward and you will be a great asset in his kingdom. So guys, I'm going to come back because it looks like there is still like uh, two more pages and it's storming. So I am definitely going to get off of here today. 
But we will come back and finish reading Chapter 7, Seasons. I'm going to mark it here with my ink pen and put this little thing back in it. But we will finish reading that. Because I haven't been on here 25 minutes, so I'm going to get off of here so I can get it downloaded on my YouTube channel. Remember, subscribe to my channel, like it, share it, comment on it. And remember the name has changed to Writers Inc. See you later, guys. I'll be back Friday.